You look at where the population centers in the south were. New Orleans is really the only major population center west of the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, and for that reason, New Orleans is always sort of an afterthought in the minds of the Confederate leadership. They believed that with the resources that had been disposed to New Orleans, that the city could be held. Jefferson Davis somehow could not understand the incredible strategic importance of New Orleans and that New Orleans was quite easy to take. New Orleans was not a fortified city. It was not very well protected at all. And although many city leaders begged and pled and said, please, please, we must have some decent defenses right now before they attack, he couldn't get to it. Two aging but heavily armed forts 70 miles below New Orleans were the main defense, along with a chain barrier stretched across the river to block passage of Union warships. Makeshift Confederate gunboats were stationed above the forts. Plating for the first ironclad ram was fabricated in the Custom House, now taken over by the Confederacy and dedicated to the war effort. But it wasn't enough to stop the Union fleet under the command of David G. Farragut. In an explosive battle in the pre-dawn hours of April 24, 1862, Farragut's fleet broke through the Confederate defenses and headed upriver to New Orleans. News of the battle surprised and angered the New Orleans populace. As Farragut's ships are going up the river, preparing to anchor off New Orleans, you would see some people standing along the levee flying the, you know, waving American flags. But once he arrives in the city, there are crowds there that are hissing and moaning and are, you know, cheering for, um, for Jefferson Davis and the Confederacy and booing for Abraham Lincoln. And when he sends his, his two officers ashore to demand the surrender of the city, the two men are almost mobbed. And the mayor has to make sure that the two men make it back to the boat without being you know, strung up on the lamppost by these mobs that are there in the city. But surrender was inevitable. Confederate troops had evacuated. Cotton, sugar, molasses, and anything else of commercial value was destroyed to prevent it from falling into Union hands. A despondent T.K. Wharton made his final diary entries in those anxious days. April 28th, 1862. The month closes with the deplorable fact that our city has been abandoned by the governor, all forces, and all our government officers. We are now in the hands of federal troops.